Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yes, we have. Let's stand as we lift our praises to the Lord on this day. this morning. There's joy in the house of the Lord today. Amen. All right. We'll do the benediction and go home. Um, nope, we won't. <laughs> 
It's good to have you all here today. We are uh, happy to have you here in the sanctuary with us, as well as those who have tuned in on uh, the internet today to be a part of our worship experience. Our ushers are making their way towards the front. If you are here for the first time, uh, would you raise your hand as they make their way back to the back of the sanctuary? Um, they will uh, have an envelope to give you. In that envelope is a card. If you would please fill that out and place it in the offering plate when it's passed later on during the service, we would appreciate the opportunity to get to know you as well. We're pleased that you're all here today, and we hope that God will bless you as we worship together. There are a few announcements that I would like to go over. Just a reminder that um, this midweek will be uh, Redeemed Teens will be meeting up in the other building. Uh, and then cherubs will be meeting downstairs, and uh, midweek service will be here in the sanctuary as well as online for those who can't make it into the sanctuary. Uh, looking ahead, uh, Ever Ready uh, will be meeting on June the 14th at 6.30. It's open to any of the women in the church, and they'd love to have you come and join them. They meet in the room just on the other side of the hallway. Uh, it's a good time of fellowship for the ladies as they meet together. And then Bible School is going to be coming up, and the director of Vacation Bible School would like to speak to you. And I'm going to let you use my microphone. Aren't I a nice guy? You're welcome. Anytime. <laughs> Using his microphone, I feel very special. <laughs> Good morning. This is one of the first times I will be up here announcing VBS, but not the last time. So it's coming up quick. And our theme this year is monumental, celebrating God's greatness. So what a wonderful theme that is. Our dates this year are July 19th through the 21st. That's Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, time 6 o'clock to 8.30 for children grades, kindergarten through fifth grade, or fifth, if you've completed fifth going into sixth, you're still welcome. So if you're interested in helping, please let me know because we would love to get you plugged in somewhere. There's many areas that you can serve in Vacation Bible School. We have a sign-up sheet on the back window out in the narthex on the right-hand side as you leave the sanctuary. So I'm going to have a workers' meeting on July or June. No, not after the fact. June 21st. Um, <clears throat> it's a Tuesday evening, 6.30 in the lounge. And we will also hope to have safe harbor training. For any of you who've done it before, you know that's the training we provide so you have safety working with children and know all the procedures. So um, we're just really looking forward to it. It's going to be an exciting theme. I have, really have a heart for Vacation Bible School. And um, just over the years, it just seems like every year it gets better. So the themes are great. The children that come, you know, a lot of them aren't church, so we just welcome them to come to VBS and hear about the Lord for the first time. You know, sometimes we've had decisions made, so it's just a wonderful opportunity. So if you have, have talents in some areas or maybe don't even know where, we can definitely find a place to put you. So I have a couple immediate needs, so think about this. We like to have someone who could assemble our monumental logo display. It's a cardboard display display to put up out in the hallway. So if you have skills in that area, putting together a display, if you can read directions, which I have for you, it would probably take 15 or 20 minutes. So if you'd like to do that to help us out, we'd love to get that up out in the hallway. And also, if you have good penmanship or good writing skills, we have some publicity posters that I'd like to have written up, just with things like you know the dates, the times, the ages of the children on that. I have 10 publicity posters. We'll put some around our church. And we've invited a couple other churches in the air, so we'd like to take some over to them. So if you could help us out with that area, that would be wonderful too. And I have the posters right here with markers. So I have, um, if you are interested and like to do that, you could see me or see Becky Wallace, who's my wonderful helper over there. Um, you can see one of us after church and we could get you hooked up with those, okay? But we just especially ask that you start praying for this. It's a big undertaking. You know, last year, coming out of COVID, it's been really kind of an unknown and uncharted territory, you know, not knowing what to expect. So we did our day up at Bethel Park last year, and this year we're trying a three-day shortened program instead of the full week. But we're still excited about it. And so we just covet your prayers and just... Um, ask that you just really remember, you know, workers, you know, children, and just all preparations for VBS will be honoring to the Lord. Thank you.
So be looking forward to Vacation Bible School. It's a great time. Kids always go away excited and uh, filled with God's word. And we're told that when we do that faithfully, God blesses that input that we have put into children's lives. I think that we've got all our announcements covered. So if I didn't, I'll share it with you next week. Um, we're here to worship the Lord. Just think, think over your last week, how God has been there for you, been there by your side, provided for you, maybe even protected you from things you weren't even aware that were a risk for you at the moment. But God is always faithful. He's always taking care of us, and he always provides for us. And he's worthy of our praise. So that's why we meet here today, to give him the praise that he's worthy of. But let's prepare our hearts to worship him today. morning. It is good to be in the house of the Lord. Amen. Amen. We're going to start off our worship time together reading from Psalm 122. I rejoiced with those who said to me, let us go to the house of the Lord. Our feet are standing in your gates, O Jerusalem. Jerusalem is built like a city that is closely compacted together. That is where the tribes go up the tribes of the Lord, to praise the name of the Lord according to the statutes given to Israel. There the thrones for judgment stand, the thrones of the house of David. Pray for the peace of Jerusalem. May those who love you be secure. May there be peace within your walls and security within your citadels. For the sake of my brothers and friends, I will say peace be within you. For the sake of the house of the Lord our God, I will seek your prosperity. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we do pray for peace in Jerusalem. We do pray for peace in our own nation. We pray for peace within our own selves. Father, you are a God of peace. You have given us a reason for peace, for all that you have done for us by going to a cross so that we wouldn't have to die in eternal death. Father, thank you for all that you have done for us. And as we've gathered together today to sing praises to you, to sit at your feet as you speak to us, and later to gather around the table and remember that sacrifice you've made May we leave here today changed. And may you be glorified in all that is said and done. In the name we pray, amen. Let's stand as we continue to lift our praises to the Lord this day. Start 
it again.
morning. If you haven't noticed, today is Pentecost Sunday, the 50 days after Jesus' resurrection. And uh, there's a verse in scripture that I think is overlooked a lot, but I think it's very, very important for us to appreciate uh, the Holy Spirit in our lives. And uh, it's, it's after Jesus is talking to Nicodemus about, you know, that famous passage, you must be born again. And Nicodemus came to him in, in the cover of darkness because he was a member of the uh, Sanhedrin. And, um, I mean, excuse me, uh, yeah, a member of Sanhedrin. And um, so Jesus tells him, you must be born again. But then he describes what that looks like. And he describes it like this. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear the sound of it. But you do not know where it is coming from or where it is going. So is everyone who has been born of the Spirit. So let's remember that. And let's have a moment. We're going to have a moment of silent prayers and music plays. But if, the, if we're on the wind of the Holy Spirit, let's take a, a fresh perspective of where is the wind taking us? Who is the wind bringing us across their path? Somebody that we need to minister to or somebody maybe they need to minister to us. But, you know, God is always at work in our lives. And so now let's, let's take fresh look at an appreciation of, you know, that we're on God's wind and, and see people from that perspective. As the music plays, uh, let's pray silently and then I will uh, lead us in, in corporate prayer.
Father, it is amazing to me. It is amazing to me how you choose to dwell in and among your people. How you, by the blood of Christ, have created for yourself a place to dwell within us. And so thank you for your spirit. Your spirit that, that moves us, it moves others in our li- into our lives and moves us into other people's lives. How God, as you, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, are a community, you desire us to be in community with each other. And so this morning, Lord, um, uh, bless this community of believers and help us, Lord, as we worship you together in spirit and in truth. Help us to be a blessing to you. Your deepest desire, Lord, is to have a personal relationship with every one of us. And so I pray, Lord, that this service be an inspiration and that as pastor shares uh, the words of life from your scripture, Lord, and what you've laid on his heart that we need to hear, Lord, help us to know that the spirit has us on its wind. On the, the wind of the spirit, Lord, um, is bringing us here, is, is uh, teaching us your word. And so that we can leave here, Lord, with a fresh perspective of being a follower of Jesus Christ uh, to a world that needs to, to hear about your great salvation. So I pray, Lord, if there's anybody uh, that has not yet experienced uh, the love of Christ and your great salvation, uh, that they would consider Jesus again. And that as your spirit testifies of Jesus, Lord, help us to testify of Jesus as well. And so that perfect union of understanding you uh, will reign in our hearts and in others' hearts so they can say yes to Jesus. Uh, Father, um, we do uh, pray for um, our shut-ins, Lord. There are uh, those among us that um, cannot physically come here, Lord, but we're grateful uh, that uh, it can be broadcast and that they can experience uh, meeting with us, Lord, from home. Uh, We're grateful for uh, our dear loved one, uh, Barbara Warner, that you took her through the surgery, Lord, and uh, thank you, Carolyn, for stepping up and and being with her this morning. Uh, Lord, we um, are grateful for um, the family of God and how we can show our love for each other and thereby show the world uh, your love. Lord, uh, we lift up our military. Um, They are um, in harm's way more than we even know, Lord. There's things that, you know, they can't even tell us. Um, So I pray, Lord, that you would minister to those who are are, um, sacrificing um, or willing to sacrifice um, for their country so that we can be free to even meet in the name of Jesus, Lord, in a world that doesn't appreciate that, and in, there are places in the world, Lord, that people cannot meet in the name of Jesus. Lord, help us to appreciate um, how much you've given to us and to always be uh, grateful. Lord, um, we want to lift up, uh, um, there are some among us who, who are ill, Lord, and um, I pray that you would minister to them even at this moment. Help them to uh, know that they are a a part of us even when they can't be here. Lord, we want to always lift up our first responders. Um, The tragedy of these years of the COVID pandemic have shown us uh, just how important uh, our first responders are and the people in the medical field are. I pray, Lord, that you would protect them from uh, being overwhelmed and give them a peace, as Randy prayed and read in your scripture, Lord, that your desire is for us to have peace. Uh, It's hard to imagine how some of our medical uh, people who work so tirelessly and so long hours, how they can have peace, Lord, but by your spirit, we can have uh, supernatural peace. And I pray that for uh, those that are on the front lines, Lord, and put their um, lives on the line for our safety. So, Lord, there have been some tragic uh, situations, Lord. Um, We don't understand these things. Um, But I pray, Lord, that those involved, the the, the parents that have lost children, the family members that have uh, been lost to to violence, Lord, 
Uh, we know that you abhor violence, and I pray, Lord, that you would, uh, again, bring them peace. Uh, I pray against the root of bitterness, Lord. Uh, it would be very easy to be bitter, uh, but you can work against the root of bitterness. And so I pray that for those involved in the, in the tragedies who have lost loved ones. Uh, again, Lord, I pray for your ministry to their hearts. So, Lord, um, we give you the service. Uh, we give you praise. Uh, we pray to you. We desire to hear from you. And so, Lord, uh, help us to be your people and teach us that you are our God uh, in every aspect of our lives. And so, Lord, we, we give you our love this morning. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. As we continue in our worship, let's stand together and sing glory to his name. <laughs> Our God and our Father, we are grateful for the investment that Jesus made in each one of our lives by going to the cross and being the supreme sacrifice for our sins. We could never return that um, through our gratitude, the value of what Jesus did on our behalf, but we can declare it in various ways in our worship by lifting our praise to you and also bringing our tithes and offerings to you. Father, we ask that you would bless those who give from a grateful heart this day, and we ask that you'd also bless that which is received. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen.
If you would, please take out your Bibles and turn to Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. You know, we sang a chorus when we first came in this morning. There's joy in the house of the Lord. But I want to say to you that I believe it's more than just a spirit of joy inside this building. For our bodies are the house of the Lord as well, for those who have accepted Jesus Christ as their personal Savior. And that joy needs to be in the midst of our lives as well. There's nothing more discouraging than to see a bunch of Christians walking around with a puss and a, and a frown and not happy and complaining and being critical. I, I, didn't, I, I have never remembered a song being sung about the importance of being critical, but I have heard many songs of the importance of having joy in your life. In one of the songs that I remember singing as a kid, there was a chorus, and it said, If you want joy, real joy, wonderful joy, let Jesus come into your heart. And so God wants us to have that spirit of joy all the time and excitement. It's not about having a fake a smile on your face. It's about experiencing the fullness of God's presence. And today we're going to talk about the amazing Almighty. You know, when we think of our God, we need to think of him as not just a person who's out there because he's right here as well. But he's also an amazing God because he's able to do things far beyond our understanding or our ability. You know, when you think of the surgery that Barbara had this week, I was nervous about it because I have a friend who had, I was telling the deacons about this last week, I had a friend who had that same kind of surgery about it, uh, 10 years ago, and um, she lost her ability to speak clearly, and she lost her ability to, to walk without somebody holding her arm, and, and uh, she was a wonderful lady and a very active lady and a, a, a very involved in her church, but she lost those skills because of that surgery and having that, that benign tumor removed. So I was really praying hard for Barbara that that wouldn't happen. Well, guess what happened? God heard our prayers. And other than the evidence of surgery, you really wouldn't know a whole lot about her having had that surgery this last week. That means that God has been amazing and able to do things that you and I can't comprehend. So as we look today at Luke, we're going to look at amazing, the amazing Almighty. It starts at verse 1. When he had completed all his discourse in the hearing of the people, he went to Capernaum. And a certain centurion slave who was highly regarded by him was sick and about to die. And when he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and save the life of his slave. And when they had come to Jesus, they earnestly entreated him, saying, He is worthy for you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation. And it was he who built us our synagogue. Now Jesus started on his way with them, and when he was already not far from the house, the centurion sent friends, saying to him, Lord, do not trouble yourself further, for I am not worthy for you to come under my roof. For this reason I did not even consider myself worthy to come to you, but just say the word, and my servant will be healed. For I too am a man under authority." with soldiers under me. And I say to this one, go, and he goes. And I say to another, come, and he comes. And to my slave, do this, and he does it. Now when Jesus heard this, he marveled at him. And he turned and said to the multitude that was following him, I say to you, not even in Israel have I found such great faith. And when those who had been sent returned to the house, they found the slave in good health. God always blesses us when we read from his word. You know, he didn't just inspire the word for us to gain um, theological insight, but he also gave us real life situations so that you and I would understand that he can take care of us just like he did when he walked the roads of Israel. Let's pray before we begin. Father, I thank you for the truth of your word. I thank you that we have the privilege this day to look into your word. 
I know that the enemy would love for us to be distracted. Father, I ask that you would bind him and cast him from this place and not allow him to place thoughts in our minds, to place concerns in our hearts, to be distractive to us when we need to be paying attention to you. I ask that on this day, as Mark has shared, it's Pentecost Sunday, that you would fill us with the presence of your Holy Spirit. So that when we leave this place, we'll not only know that we've been in your presence, but we'll be so filled with your joy and your peace and your comfort and your words of encouragement will be about to explode when we go outside. And others will want to know why we're acting so crazy and we'll be able to say it's because we've got the joy of the Lord in our lives and you can have him too. So, Father, I ask that you would place upon my lips this day the words that you want me to share. May the words of my mouth and the meditations from my heart be found acceptable in your sight. For it's in Jesus' name that I pray. Amen. Temple leaders were amazed at Jesus even in his young life. In Luke chapter 2, verses 46 and 47, it says this. Then after three days, they found him in the temple. Remember that his parents had left Jerusalem from the Passover and uh, their son wasn't there. <laughs> You ever had that worry? I remember we had a time around the church here one time where a mother was working around the building and, and her child disappeared. I'll never forget that day. Man, we were full of fear. Wandered all around this building looking for this little kid. Found out that she thought it was funny. She found out it wasn't so funny from the pastor when we finally found her because I found her. But she, when she, we, she knew we were getting near her, she'd move to another spot. She's made a game out of it. But you know these days when kids are snatched up, you just never know. And it was scary. Well, I can't imagine the fright that was on the, the spirit of, of Mary and Joseph as they were leaving. They probably figured he was with relatives or whatever as they journeyed back to their home. And to know that their son wasn't there as they checked with their relatives. And if you look at Luke chapter 2 and around verse 46, you'll see that they were very concerned and had asked if anyone had seen him. So they went back to Jerusalem. Where did they find him? In the temple, in the synagogue. What a great place for Jesus to be. Look at what it continues to say. They found him in the temple, sitting in the midst of the teachers, both listening to them and asking them questions. This is the best part. Verse 47, and all who heard him were amazed at his understanding and his answers. They didn't know this, but they were sitting in the presence of the Son of God. And they were blown away by not only his ability to comprehend what they were sharing, but they were also blown away about his ability to communicate spiritual truths to them as well. Oh, that you and I would have that same desire that the child Jesus had. That we would have a desire to be so filled with his presence, so filled with his insight, so filled with his joy, that we would impress those that we're interacting with. And that's what Jesus did. And then in Luke chapter 4, verse 36, an amazement came upon them all. And they began talking with one another, saying, what is this message? For with authority and power, he commands the unclean spirits, and they come out. His power is amazing. His ability is amazing. His understanding of people's needs is amazing. And then in Luke chapter 5, verse 24, But so that you know that the Son of Man has authority on earth to forgive sins, he said to the paralytic, I say to you, get up, pick up your stretcher, and go home. Can you believe that? Can you believe that those things happened? I do. I believe they happened. But the thing is that you and I think that that happened back then, and we forget that it can happen now too. God's power is still alive. God's power is still present. The problem is we don't tap into it. It's like having electricity in your home. It, electricity in the walls is great, but until you plug in the appliance, it's not going to work. It's not going to experience 
what electricity can do to it. And you and I, unless we plug in to what the presence of God, the presence of our Savior Jesus Christ, and the Holy Spirit being in our life, if we don't plug into that, we're never going to experience the amazing Almighty. And I think that that's what's holding the church back today. We're afraid of it. Remember that first time you put the plug in the socket? You probably put it in very carefully. Kids do a better job of it. They just jab it in there. You and I are very careful with it because we don't want any sparks coming back at us. I want the sparks of Jesus to come back to me. So I'm asking you today to give serious thought to plugging in to the amazing Almighty. There's no getting around it. He's a wonderful Lord, and he's a capable Lord. In fact, uh, Charles Gabriel wrote a song back in 1905. It's a song that I've known since I was a kid. And the first line in it says, I stand amazed in the presence of Jesus the Nazarene. I wonder how he could love me, a sinner condemned, unclean. How marvelous. Oh, how wonderful. And my song shall ever be. How marvelous, how wonderful is my Savior's love for me. Maybe we need to walk around with a little more amazement of who God is and his love for us so that we begin to have that joy and that peace that he so desires us to have. We're going to look at a situation today where the amazing Almighty made the difference in the life of one who was willing to put his faith in him. This is a very first experience that Luke shares of a Gentile being affected by the presence of Jesus. This is a perfect example of God's desire and our Savior's desire to not be exclusive to the people of Israel, but a desire for all to come to him. Him as seen in this situation. It says in verses 1 and 2, when he had completed all his discourse in the hearing of people, he went to Capernaum, and a centurion slave who was highly regarded by him was sick and about to die. There's two things about this servant that we know right away. He was highly regarded, but he was also sick on the door of death. Jesus taught the people that you can identify a person by the fruit in their life. And there's over 33 miracles that Jesus shares, and 11 of them were in Capernaum. Only two were done with Gentiles, and this one is done with a centurion guard. What's the first thing that we're told in this situation, this environment? It says that the servant was highly regarded. It means that he was held in honor. He was held with great respect. He was prized. He was precious. It means a centurion would do whatever he had to for this slave because of his love for him and because of the slave's dedication to him. A centurion was a Roman soldier who was in charge of a hundred Soldiers, and he was considered to be a man's man. He wasn't a wimp. He, he was a strong dude. You didn't mess with a centurion when he came around. Excuse me, I got to get a drink here. The well's running dry. He wants us to understand that this centurion who had it all together, had all the resources, resources available to him, still had a need, and that need was to care for a slave who was highly regarded by him. And he came to Jesus. Even though he was a man of rank and power, he knew that he needed Jesus to help solve this problem. And so he paid great honor to Jesus by saying to him that he knew that he could do something for his slave. In Mark chapter 15, verse 39, we see another centurion who was moved by the presence of Jesus. When the centurion who was standing right in front of him, him being Jesus, saw the way he breathed his last, Jesus breathing his last, he, last, he said, truly this man was the son of God. Another centurion who had everything at his disposal understood that what was before him 
was something that far beyond he had ever experienced in this life, and it was the, the Son of God. The slave of centurion is very sick. The word slave here means one who was an attendant. And the word used here for the slave means that this individual was probably a teenager. I know the bristles go up when we say word teenager. We think all kinds of things. But this was an individual who was committed to his master. I'm reminded of another teenager that we find in Kings who was taken as a slave and her master got sick, really sick with leprosy. And she said to the centurion's wife, the soldier's wife, you need to have the prophet come and heal my master. A teenager who said he needs to experience the presence of God. He needs to experience the power that God has available. And the prophet can lay hands on him and pray to God and he will be healed. That teenager made a big difference in Naaman's life. And this teenager obviously had made a big difference in the centurion's life. So much so that he wanted to do anything he could to save this child's life. And so he calls for help. Verse 3, and when he heard about Jesus, he sent some Jewish elders asking him to come and save the life of his slave. And when they came to Jesus, they earnestly implored him, saying, he is worthy for you to grant this to him, for he loves our nation, and it was he who built the synagogue. So we see a centurion in all his toughness has a soft heart for the people that he watches over and keeps guard over. And he sees something in their life that makes a difference in his. And so it tells us in the scriptures that he was worthy of this opportunity, worthy of what Jesus could do for him because of the things that he had done for them in their relationship to God. He had built the synagogue that they worshiped at. And so when the Roman officer heard that Jesus was in the area. He sent out the request. He sent the leaders of the synagogue to go see Jesus and ask him to come and and lay healing hand upon him. But as he thought more about it, as he thought more about Jesus coming under his roof, what did he say? I'm not worthy to have you in my house. I want you to understand something. They're in the person in this room. It's unworthy of what Jesus wants to do in your life. Don't turn him away. I know that we think we're unworthy. You might have a past that you wish you could put an eraser to. Jesus can do that. He can put an eraser to your past. He can help you to be free from the things that you need to be removed from and set free from. And Jesus... Responded to the request. Though he was a Roman, he loved the Jewish people. He had faith in the Lord. And that's the part that helped this situation come about. It was his faith that made the difference. Not because he built the synagogue. I mean, that was a nice thing to do. But what God's looking for is our faith. If you've got an issue in your life, if you've got a struggle going on in your life, you've got a hurdle to get over, you've got a valley to get through, you've got a hill to get over, there's only one who can get you through those things. But it needs to be your faith and my faith that helps us to get through those struggles. You'll never get through it alone. We had a little struggle here this morning when we were practicing, and there were all kinds of shrieking electronic noises. Um, That's pretty scary when that happens because you don't know where it's coming from and it just makes it tough to be able to do anything without fear that that uh, electronic noise might happen again. Then it was decided we should pray. We did all kinds of things and it was still doing it. But we decided to pray. Now, most people would say, why would you go to God about an electronic issue? You just need to figure it out. God knew what the solution was. 
We just needed his input in giving us guidance and what we needed to do. This is what I'm trying to tell you. So faith, even about everyday stuff that we can't figure out, is what we need to reach out to him for. And that's what we did. We stopped and we prayed, Lord, help us troubleshoot this situation. Because <laughs> as Alan said to me, Alan uh, Messier said to me, I've got a busting headache from the noise. That's how loud it was. And do you know what happened right after we prayed? What do you think happened? You didn't hear any shrieking electronic noises this morning, did you? God helped us. I know it sounds crazy, but it's real. God helped us find the solution. And if he does things like that, I want to tell you, he'll do the same thing in your life, in my life, if we'll but have faith to put those things in his hands and allow him to do even things that don't make sense to us. And that's what this soldier was doing. He knew, he had heard that Jesus was a healer and he was willing to take the risk and reach out for Jesus' help. But then when he heard Jesus was coming, he began to reflect on, boy, I can't have him in my house. I'm not worthy to have him here. Just speak the word. Remember, I, I, I thought of, here comes Moses again. But what did God tell Moses to do when they needed water to drink? Moses got himself into trouble for this. God told Moses to speak the word. Speak the word. He wanted to know that Moses had faith. But Moses was frustrated with the way the people were acting, and he let that emotion get in his way. And sometimes we do that. We let our emotions get in the way. And what did Moses do? He went over and beat that rock. And he said, should I get you water? God didn't tell him to beat the rock. God told him to speak the word. Why? Because it's the word that makes the difference. And water just poured out of that rock because God said, I'll give you water. But Moses, there's a price to pay because you didn't do what I told you to do. You didn't speak the word. And the centurion, when, it, when I thought of what the centurion asked the next group to go to Jesus and say, just tell him to speak the word. There's a song that the choir used to sing, there's power. In the name of Jesus. When you're in a struggle, just call out to him. Jesus, give me strength. Jesus, help me to not be defeated. Jesus, take care of this situation because I don't know what to do. Jesus, there's something about that name and Jesus has power to transform and change and stop and reroute anything that's going on in our lives and the centurion said speak the word that's all you got to do I don't need you to be under my roof I have so much faith in you I know that all you have to do is say my slave is healed and I know that he will instantaneously be healed. We don't walk around in that kind of confidence. But we should. We should. Here's a Gentile who was not raised in the temple, the synagogue. He, he, he uh, was aware by what he saw around him. It moved him by what he saw. But he had faith. We're told in Scripture, if we'll just have the faith of a mustard seed, we can move a mountain. I lived over in western Pennsylvania for a while. I found out how small a faith you got to have because I didn't move one mountain while I was there. And there were some big ones. I didn't have enough faith to move them because it says, if I have faith of a mustard seed, I can move a mountain. But who has the ability to move mountains? He does. So my trust needs to come to him and allow him to move the mountains because you and I can't move them. But with him, 
we can and will be successful in our endeavor to fix the things in our lives that need to be taken care of. Yes, something happened special there that day. Can you imagine the stories that continued to go around after that slave was healed? Can you imagine how the centurion felt of knowing that one that he loved and cared about and appreciated had been given another opportunity of life? Can you imagine how that slave must have felt as he heard the story about the faith of his master and what his faith had done? You see, God wants us to have a concrete confidence in him. Not one that bends in the breeze, but one that's solid, trusting him for everything that we need and need to take care of, knowing that he is able to do for us what needs to be done and what needs to be taken care of. So what is the challenge today? The challenge today is to know that you and I can have a joy in our life in the house of the Lord because we know that the master of the house has got it. And the master of the house is going to take care of it. And the master of the house has the answer for every need that the house has. Let's pray. Our God and our Father, I thank you for the truth of your word today and the challenge that we have to put our complete faith in you. That sounds so easy when we say it, and yet in reality it's very hard to do. But I ask today that you would help us to understand the importance and the value of putting our complete trust in you, having faith that you are able. And help us to know that... All you have to do is speak the word, and our lives will be changed. Father, I thank you for this situation in the centurion, and I pray that we will learn the importance of having a faith that is so strong. We put our life completely in your hands for the resolve. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. As we gather here this day, it's also an opportunity not only for us to recognize his power, but also to understand that he is the one who made it possible for you and I to have a personal relationship with God. Jesus gave his life at Calvary with you and I on his mind. He died, his blood was shed. His blood was shed so that we could have forgiveness of sin. And that blood still flows for those who have not accepted him yet. We also need to understand that when we receive Jesus into our heart, we also become a child of God. We are adopted into his family. A spiritual adoption into God's family is one that gives us the ability to be a joint heir with Jesus Christ. That's what scripture tells us. Think about that. God loves us so much that he wants us to be one of his kids. And it comes through receiving him as savior. Jesus told us as we observe this in scripture do this as often as you do in remembrance of me. We need to remember what Jesus did for each one of us. So let's prepare to meet him today as we gather around the communion table. I'm going to ask that we would enter into a time of silent prayer, and then I'm going to ask Mark if he would offer the prayer for the body of Christ.
Lord Jesus, we do thank you for the price you paid on the cross, Lord. Scripture tells us that by Jesus' stripes we are healed. So, Lord, uh, we thank you for healing us, healing the separation between ourselves and you uh, by your own um, broken body. So, Lord, as we partake of this, help us to remember. Remember what you've done for us and remember our place in your kingdom. We thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Scripture tells us that Jesus took the bread and broke it and said, this is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. Scripture tells us in like manner also, he took the cup. I want to ask George if he'd offer the prayer of thanksgiving for the blood of Jesus Christ. Father, as we remember the great gift that your son gave in presenting his body and, and shedding his blood in order to redeem us, mm -hmm. the perfect Lamb of God, whose blood uh, cleansed the sins of the world and redeemed us, gave us the privileges of being adopted into your family. Lord, uh, we thank you for it. We thank uh, the Son for it. We 
pray that uh, as we remember it this morning that you will uh, give us additional and, and a better insight into the gift that we were given. We pray in Jesus' name. Jesus took the cup and he said, this is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for many for forgiveness of sin. Let us drink together. Father, we thank you for the sacrifice that Jesus made on our behalf. <clears throat> may we never take it for granted. And may we live with a joy that fills our lives because of who has residency in our very heart. May he rule our, our house and guide our house to shine for you wherever we go. And may the joy of the Lord be evident by those we come in contact with. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing our closing song. There's something about that name. God, we thank you for that special name that changes lives, that brings hope to the hopeless, that be, brings peace to those who find themselves in unrest. But a name that can change a life and make a difference. Father, it has been good to be in your house today. It's been good to be able to sing our praises. It's been good to be able to look into your word together. It's been good to be able to sit around the table of remembrance as well. And we pray that the things that we have experienced in this house will add to the joy in our personal house as we go out of the doors this day. For it's in Jesus' name that we pray. Amen. Amen.